Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Naquan Jordan, the AI protagonist, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at how to create consistent characters in Stable Diffusion. So I've been getting a lot of comments on some of my previous videos asking how am I able to recreate characters um, from previous prompts and put them into new models, new platforms, and things like that. So I figured I'd put a tutorial together showing you guys how I can do it. So there's two different methods. Uh, the first method is, of course, creating a very detailed prompt. If we look at the prompt that I use for this character, we have a 28-year-old Black American woman named Stacy, long black hair, brown eyes, feminine features, and then it goes into the actual camera and the type of image that I'm looking for. I did add some stuff at the end, like uh, intricate eye detail and white dress. The dress was just to make sure that she has clothing so I didn't really go too deep into that, but the actual description of the character is where I went as detailed as possible. So you can add all kinds of details like the, um, the actual ethnicity of the woman, background, um, country, like you can say Norwegian woman, um, Canadian woman, Brazilian woman. And of course, adding a name will help out as well. So first and last name is better than just using a first name, but make sure it is something that's made up. You don't want to use a celebrity name for obvious reasons, but when you do actually use a name, it will try to recreate that character. And then of course you have stuff like the hair, hair color, hair length, eye color, different things like that, cheekbones, um, actual nose type, eyebrows, chin, all that stuff you can put into Stable Diffusion. And every time you reuse that prompt, it will try to recreate that person. So you can see here in the, the first generations that I've made, we had two that were very similar, um, almost exact face, just a few details. And then we have over here, two very similar images as well, almost the exact same face. You can see a similar situation here where it created three of the same person and then one little wild card that it threw in there. And then in this last set, you can see that all four of them were very, very similar, almost exact same face, same eyebrows, um, cheekbones and all that stuff, except for this one, her cheekbones seems to be a little bit different than the others. But for the most part, it is the same character. So that's probably um, the easier way to create consistent characters. Of course, it does not work well with clothing, as you can see. That is an issue with Stable Diffusion. Now, the second method is to use Control Net. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of these images. We will, I'm going to go with this one because I, I like this one. So we're going to select this image and I'm going to click on variations. And what I need to do is I need to send this image to control net. So I'm going to click on this down here, send to control net. And we want to make sure that the intelligent analysis is off. Uh, if it's on, then it will try to recreate the image using um, the best models that it can think of, the best prompt it can think of. So we don't want to do that. We want to create it using the exact same prompt. So make sure this is off. And then you want to go over to type, control net type, and you want to go all the way down to reference generation. So you can see reference generation uploads images of characters, objects, items as reference to generate similar new images. And you can actually see it generated four different images of a very similar style using the exact same character. So that is what we want to use. The things that you really need to actually pay attention to is the style fidelity. This unique feature in reference generation adjusts how closely an image follows the reference by tuning the strength setting. And then you have control, control weight, uh, determine the strength of control net. Higher strength means more pronounced effects. And so these are the um, adjustments that you want to play around with. Obviously, if control net is really high, then it will basically recreate the same image. And then style fidelity is how much you want to adhere to the actual style of the image. So what I will do is I will just kind of bump these up a little bit. I do have restore faces on and I'm gonna leave everything else the same and click on generate. 
And while that is generating, um, I should have probably changed the prompt to a black dress because that is a black dress prompt, but we'll see what happens. But I am going to grab another one and do the same thing. So I'll go with this one and send that to control net. And we're going to go back to reference generation and I'm going to we'll bump these up a little bit higher just so we can see the difference when you have it high and the difference when you have it kind of in the middle. They have different types of uh, control modes so you can play with these as well. You can see that it changes between prioritizing prompts or pre-processing or leave it balanced. I'm just going to leave it on balance and then click generate so we'll generate four more images. So with the first few images, you can see that it did recreate the woman with the black dress. It almost completely recreated the dress. It almost looks like the exact same dress. A little bit different in each prompt. This one actually added a bottom part for the dress. But the face of the character looks almost exactly the same. So you can see this one worked out very, very well. It's a much, much more... Um, efficient way of recreating the same character. So we'll see what this one turned out to look like. All right, and here's how these turn out. You can see it does look a little bit off, just the lighting itself looks a little weird. But as far as the actual character, it is the same character in all four images. Just the, there's so much stuff in the images that looks off as far as like the outfit and the lighting and stuff like that. So you definitely don't want to put those settings up too high, but it still created the same character in all four. So we got the same character in all four there, the same character in all four there. We will do one more test. Uh, let's do this one. I like the way this one came out. So this one, we will send it to control net, uh, do the exact same settings. And I'll just put it up a little bit, put that at like, I'll leave that at six. And I'll leave this at 1.1 and then we will generate four images. And here is the results. You can see it um, recreated a similar color top as in the original image, but we do have four of the same character, all kinds of different poses. Um, different camera lengths and stuff like that so it turned out uh, pretty good all four of them definitely same same face uh, this one looks a little bit lighter than the others but that just could be due to the um, the actual lighting just like this one's a little bit darker but the facial features itself are all pretty much the same so that is the easier way to create consistent characters but unfortunately that only works if you do have control net and that particular uh, reference guidance for control net so that was pretty much it if you guys have any more questions just go ahead leave them in the comments below if there's any more uh, tutorials that you'd like to see i'd love to hear about them and of course if you have any kind of showcases that you'd like to show i'd love to check out your guys work myself so thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.